Welcome to Lost Without Japan, a travel podcast about the life changing experiences of exploring Japan and those moments we would be lost without. For your listening pleasure, allow me to introduce your very own Kanko Gaido, Michael. Welcome to episode 29 of Lost Without Japan, a podcast based on Japan and your Lost Without moments. This is your director of travel for TKIC Studio Productions, coming to you with hopes and dreams of a return to travel for others in 2022 and for myself in summer 2023. I'd like to thank you for giving me a bit of your time today. And I truly hope this podcast finds you in a good place or on the path to a better one, no matter how it may seem at this moment. My belief is that we can all use a beacon like this one in our lives to help guide us during these times. And my hope is that Japan, along with this show, will become that for you. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're returning Lost Without listener, thank you again for your time and clicking that subscribe button to join us once again. For anyone that's joining us today from meeting me or my daughter at Gen Con, welcome to the show as well. But don't feel bad if I don't use your name to welcome you at this moment. A bit of a peek behind this show's recording schedule as I get ready to go back to school is that I'm trying to get these episodes recorded as far out as I can so that you, the listener, will not miss our show in that bi-weekly basis that we've been able to keep up to for this year and also give me a bit of time to get back to being that classroom teacher that I love being. Now, Lost Without Japan will be celebrating a one-year podcasting anniversary in late August or early September with our first annual anniversary show. I'd like to offer front row tickets to this show through riverside.fm to view the recording as it happens. And don't worry, no one will be able to hear you. You'll get to be an audience member and just listen along before the show is edited and probably a good week or two before it is put out onto the interwebs as well. Now let's start today's show on Kanazawa as we always do with a positive mental imagery. And let's imagine that today is the time for you to make your way to Kanazawa. Now, before the train leaves for TKIC train station, remember to double check and have all of your luggage, passports, and phone with you as you get out of the Lost Without Japan rideshare. You've made it. Today's the day you continue your journey in Japan. And as you that train that we're hopping on together today, take a few deep breaths and come along with your tour group as we make sure that your journey to Kanazawa is as wonderful as possible. And if it is either your first trip or return trip to Japan, you're going to be able to make some amazing Lost Without moments. Now, as you pass through that ticket gate, make sure to stay with your tour group. And let's see how your preparations for your next trip are going. Remember, you can always reach out to the show at lostwithoutjapan at gmail.com or at lostwithoutjapan on Instagram. As always, remember, you have access to the show's documents and information on Japan at your fingertips at any time you'd like. Just look into the show's description for our working Google Doc and also a link to Patreon. Feel free to take advantage of your travel planner at any time for support, or maybe just so we can celebrate that success. Took that money you're going to spend on Starbucks or some sort of coffee and put it into your account. That's a reason in and of itself. What are you looking to purchase next? I'm kind of looking at cameras And holding off as I do so is, again, just waiting to see when those borders open up again. But I truly would love to bring a 360 camera with me on my next trip, especially since that trip is going to be with my son. I would love to just have kind of like a working YouTube channel that I share with my son 
and my buddy Josh that's coming with us just so that any of us could click play and be transported back even when our trip may be a little, you know, further off than we would wish. Now, as always, today's stamp to take you directly to our talk on Kanazawa can be found on both the show's Google document and in the show notes for today. I truly feel lucky that we have each other on this journey, and I'm looking forward to us both supporting each other's dreams and goals. Now, before we pull out of the station, I want to kind of tell you a little bit about the wonderful city of Kanazawa. Kanazawa is located on Japan's central island of Honshu and is the capital city of the Ishikawa prefecture. Kanazawa Station is located just a short Shinkansen ride from Tokyo of about two and a half to three hours. And you're looking about $140 US unless you're, of course, taking advantage of that JR Pass where it would be free after, of course, you buy the pass. Now, if you're looking to save some money on lodging or just on the trip in general, you can also look to take a night bus that would be a seven to eight hour trip from Tokyo for around 60 to $80. Or you can also take a trip by train or plane. And the plane's what I'm gonna be talking about right now because you can actually leave Tokyo and head to Komatsu Airport and have that only be around 100 to $250. Now Shinkansen service from Kanazawa, from Tokyo, is relatively new, but it is there, but only since 2015, and I really think it's a great option for you, the tourist, if you're outside of Japan. For those of you fortunate enough to be living in Japan, though, it's only about a 45-minute trip by car. If you don't mind picking me up along the way, I promise I won't bore you with too many dad jokes and even pay some of those tolls along the way for you as well. Now, one thing to take into account is that Kanazawa Station is not located in the center of this city, and instead it's about two kilometers or a little over a mile from the city center. Kanazawa has been described by some as a smaller version of Kyoto, but just listening to this description truly sells the city short. Kanazawa is home to one of the three great gardens of Japan. Kinroku Inn, current and former geisha houses from the Edo period, dating back from 1603 to 1867, major festivals, foods such as jimbuni, and a former samurai district, a ninja temple, and really so much more. If you use Kanazawa Castle Park as the official center for the city for most of our talk today, you'll see that you're about two kilometers or one and a quarter miles from this point, which means that you could choose to navigate the city on your own. However, buses that operate on a flat fee of 200 yen per trip and taxis are also something that you could take advantage of as well. Some of these buses are JR buses, which would be free with your JR train pass, and you could also get a 600 yen unlimited ride day pass. For those that are not a part of that JR line, or if you're looking to take advantage of a bus on your journey four or more times. We'll be discussing some other lodging options as well, but the show always recommends that you book directly through these family-run businesses or other sites as well, so that they don't lose a substantial amount of your booking fees that when you book through a place like booking.com, they instantly begin to take like around a 30% hit on what they are charging. And I really wanna see these family-run businesses or smaller businesses around on my journey next summer or for summers that follow. The Google Doc for the show that includes a map link for locations covered during today's talk, will be in the show notes for you as well for those that like to follow along. We are going to be using the middle of November to give you potential lodging costs for your trip. Tom and I both went ahead and spent the prior day in Kanazawa 
and have two different travel itineraries for you to pull from. But Tom is currently off-grid, being a great dad, and camping with his son, so I'll be reading his suggestions off, as well as my own today. I usually like to grab something to eat before I begin exploring a new city. And that's exactly what I'm looking to do, because usually when you get into a town, you have to wait to check into your lodging. One place that caught my attention right away was the vegan restaurant Los Angeles. It's located near Kanazawa Castle Park. Not only is finding a vegan restaurant that offers gluten-free and vegetarian options rare enough in Japan, this restaurant is also said to be LGBTQ plus friendly and offer an English menu. The owner apparently has a brother who lives in Los Angeles who has a vegan restaurant as well, which really makes me begin to wonder if that restaurant is called Kanazawa. The lunch menu looks to be a range of 800 yen to 1,680 yen, or with current conversion rates, $6 to $12.50 US without tax. Meals cannot be shared, so each of your traveling companions will need to order their own meal. The lunch menu looks to be a combination of chef's choice with a drink and a number of sides depending on what you are paying. The burgers look to range from 1,300 to 1,800 yen, which is a bit pricey compared to other restaurants in the area. But those of you looking for vegetarian and vegan food will for sure think it's worth it. They also offer some interesting soy cafe drinks, coffee, mixed juice, herbal tea options, and even some vegan and gluten-free desserts. One of the drinks offered is Ginmai Amai Koji. It's made from brown rice, easy hikari, which originates from the Ai's shrine and has been fermented by Koji spores. These drinks look to range from 600 to 800 yen each. And at this location, it's really a pretty unique offering for Japan and really could be a perfect place to stop before you visit Kanazawa Castle. One word to the wise, though, reviews mention that items seem to go pretty quickly. So if you have your heart set on as many options as possible, probably want to get there pretty early. Now from Tom. Mike, I was in a hurry that day. I have a lot of places I wanted to see, and I didn't sit down for a meal, but I began looking for food stalls near the castle. That day, I found a stall that specialized in takoyaki. Takoyaki is a ball-shaped Japanese snack made of wheat flour-based batter and cooked in a special molded pan. It's typically filled with minced or diced octopus, tempura scraps, pickled ginger, and even green onion. Just the thing for a busy tourist wanting to catch as many sights as possible. And the castle area is a hot spot for these stalls. After enjoying a good meal myself, it was a perfect time to stroll through Kanazawa Castle Park before I checked into my lodging for the day. The location is only a 15 to 20 minute walk through Kanazawa Station and has plenty of places for you to just relax. In the end, as you travel throughout Japan, finding these spots where you can relax and have some space and nature around you can really recharge those mental batteries while you travel far from home. Quite a few people mention volunteers in the park some of which even give short tours. This area is also home to festivals, concerts, and is open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Even without any help from volunteers, you can visit their website and click the language button at the top. The park even has some audio to play in English that you can use as you walk the park and follow the paths indicated on the maps on their site. How amazing is that? There are even times to enjoy the park at night, as they are illuminated and filled with music. There are even a YouTube channel where you can get a live view of the park. Even though the park has been rebuilt and it's not original, it still has a lot to offer, including Maple House, where you can have tea, sweets, including ice cream that ranges from 400 to 850 yen, or iced or hot tea and apple juice 
you can get a great view of the castle from this spot and gives you a spot to relax and escape the cold or heat depending on when you're visiting Japan. It's recommended to get there early and go directly to that spot as the garden gets very busy during the day. Not much is original in this location, but it really doesn't detract from the nature you will find there. Now from Tom. Mike, I love the castle, but samurais have always interest me. Just west of Kanazawa Castle, if you have the time, you can stop by Nomura Samurai House and Garden. The house belonged to the Nomuras, a wealthy samurai family who served the ruling Meta family. The samurai system ended abruptly with many samurai homes lost to the ravages of time and upkeep expense. However, luckily, a combination of private ownership and public ownership has brought this unique treasures back from the brink. Outside, you'll find a small but lavish private garden, and inside you'll find various heirlooms, antiques, and artifacts from the past, not to mention a suit of armor, beautifully painted, screen drawers, elegantly carved Ranma transoms, and ceiling-paneled cypress wood. There is an inner garden and some stone lanterns, a small waterfall, and a pond stocked with colorful koi carp. Price to enter? Just 500 yen or about $4. Now, after enjoying Kanazawa Castle myself, I decided it was the perfect time to check into my lodging. For my lodging, I chose to stay at Murata Ryokan, which is just a 16-minute walk from Kanazawa Castle Park, or an 8-minute drive. This lodging offers a typical Japanese stay with various size private rooms with tatami mats. The option for a Japanese or English style breakfast is available to you. And when you book through their website, which you can switch to English, you can end up finding some deals that aren't being offered currently through booking.com. Kind of a way to encourage you to book directly with them. And there are really some special deals with this. For two people through the site, it's ranged from 70 to 80 US dollars or around 9,600 to 10,600 yen. They can accommodate anywhere from one to four people per room, with four people being 141 US dollars, or about 19,200 yen. The room is your typical Japanese-style room and does not have much in the way of decoration. The public bath and restrooms are shared, but the Ryokan is said to not have many people that can stay at one time so it shouldn't be a huge inconvenience for you when you visit. One perk is that you can pay for your room by credit, but breakfast, that's around 600 yen for an American style, or 900 yen for a Japanese style, must be paid for in cash. Another great perk that the owners are said to be. Another great perk of staying in this location is the owners are said to be super friendly and will even let you leave your luggage before your check-in time so you can explore the city. Good to know, but I wish I would have known ahead of time so I didn't bring my bag all through those areas earlier in the day. There's also a coin-operated laundry so you can get some of your items clean as you relax at night. Yukatas, towels, Wi-Fi, tea, and AC are all provided. And since it's Japan, you even have access to send or receive a fax. The location is great as well, and the pictures are said to not do this location justice. Tom decided to go in a different spot for his lodging and looked at condo rentals in Japan. So for his stay, he realized that some of his listeners, or uh, for his stay, He also, as I, realized that some of the listeners won't be able to book directly for their lodging for every time they stay, or finances could cause you to book through a popular travel rental site. And for that reason, Tom did the same. He found that this first floor condominium is in a convenient location, a six-minute walk from Kanazawa Station. The room is a two-bedroom, 
50 meter size room that can accommodate up to five people. With a kitchen, you can prepare your own meals, and there's even a drum type washer dryer. It has a nice television, a hot tub, fast Wi Fi. Also, if you're worried about your luggage and timelines, you can check your luggage here. The cost was surge based pricing for November, but that was around $49 a night. Now, for myself, after I dropped off my luggage, I wanted to head straight to the 21st Century Museum of Contemporary Art and escape some of that midday heat. Tom, I should have gotten there earlier in the day, my friend. It turns out that the museum had an hour wait to get in. I was able to look at some of the exhibits outside for free, though, and when I was finally able to get in, it was definitely worth the wait, even if I ended up missing out on Leandro Elrich, the swimming pool, as it required an additional fee and advanced registration. That's why we scout ahead, though, for the tour group and listeners of Lost Without Japan so that you don't make the same mistakes that we do. The museum does have its own website and has a lot of information about what is currently available on exhibit. I would for sure recommend checking this out ahead of time and see if it's worth it for you to pay for those inside exhibits. Once again, you can enjoy the outside of the museum for free. Currently, it's around 2,400 yen or 1,200 yen, depending on how much of the museum you want to see. I couldn't pass up on seeing the current samurai armor exhibit, though. And for only $18 US with the current exchange rate, it wasn't going to break the bank for me. And it's something with me teaching art, I truly feel I could bring back to my students this year. That all decided, it was now time for me to find some dinner before I call it a night and look to welcome all of our travel adventurers in the AM. Now, I'm not sure about you, but being out in the heat all day can really make me not so hungry, as I'd normally be, especially after waiting so long since eating my lunch. So I decided to focus on drinks and a light meal instead at the Izikaya Itaru Honten. And it turns out this location is popular among locals and in the past, tourists as well. With the wonderful atmosphere on the inside, I can totally see why you'd expect a 30-minute or more wait at times, but luckily for me, I was able to get in and get a seat right away. One thing I love is finding a great place with a website that also has English translations for me to look at even before I visit. This spot reminds me a lot of a tapas restaurant back in the States, and I was able to get a variety of small dishes and some adult beverages at night for a reasonable fee, as I normally expect what I see in the pictures to go for way more. Now, for 300 to 600 yen a piece and a drink, or let's say a couple sashimi sets for only 2,400 yen, you can have yourself a nice night and eat what you'd like. The presentation of every dish was amazing. Even their egg roll was marked with their seal. This spot has over 20 different brands of sake. And if I didn't need to welcome the tour group in the morning, I would have definitely had more than I did. And I must say, the cold noodle dish really hit the spot. And if I had wanted, I could also explore the beers that they have available as well. Prices vary. My recommendation, though, for this spot is really just to grab a few dishes and a drink, as the person near me ended up spending over 8,000 yen for some nicer fish plates and some sake for around $50 US. Being that I only had one drink and a plate, though, it was worth the cost, as the lively energy that was in this establishment really helped make sure that I could get back to my room and not just fall asleep beforehand from all the day's activities. Now, we're not done. We have some honorable mentions as well. And at the top of my list of places I would like to eat, but couldn't make it that day, is Kanazawa Nanoshi Curry. If you're in Japan, and you can even order 
pickup or delivery from Uber Eats or Dimicon, or just eat at the restaurant. This location has over 250 reviews and a rating of 4.1 out of 5. The restaurant is located on the second floor of a building that faces Hayakuman Goki Dori Avenue and is cash only. It's located just south of Kanazawa Castle Park and a perfect option for lunch or dinner after finishing your sightseeing there. One thing of note is to go ahead and look at the menu before you enter as you're going to be expected to place your order right away. The nice thing though is that their website menu is in English and Japanese. This location also offers more of a local take on curry and is similar to what you'd end up finding soup curry to be in Japan. There is an option to add spiciness to your order. It's said to be a nice level for anyone in your family. Ginger can be added to give a unique taste and would go nicely with coffee, beer, or wine that's served at the establishment. You can order a variety of curries, one of which is vegetarian vegan bean curry, and you can also order a more typical curry with chicken, beef, and why not, add on a dessert as well. Hours are currently shorter than normal, as the shop opens around 11 and closes at 2. Normally, the store is open from 11 to 7.30, so before you go and visit, just check to see if their hours have gone away from that COVID, which most likely they will when the borders open up again. Pricing is super affordable for what you get, though. For just 1,200 yen or $9 US, you get soup, dessert, and your main meal. Local beer and wine is also served for around 550 yen, with craft beer being around 750 yen and coffee or tea around 400. Tom's honorable mention was a tough one. Initially, he'd honed in on Wagashi, which is a confection admired for its ability to be sampled by the five senses. Taste, smell, touch, sight, and hearing. If you're attending in June, there's a festival that is well known for its parade, late night parties, and decorative kimonos. Tom recommended looking at Google images of the Ishikawa coastline. It reminded him of the Oregon coastline with ample hiking, surfing, water sports, vistas, and many vantages that could offer fish and crabbing as well. To refresh your energy, a short trip to the coastline may energize your batteries. Really, Tom, couldn't agree more. Just like getting out into nature, doesn't matter what type of nature, but it truly can make your trip that much better. Hanabori Hall is also worth looking into before your visit, as you might be able to add a concert, live music, or a play to your visit. Now, one thing that's also very popular is the Ninja Temple that some members of our tour group have signed up for as well. Now, you can't pass on the super popular geisha district, Higashi Chaya. There are many well-preserved buildings that really take you back in time. And if that's not enough, you could visit Omicho Fish Market as well, as it is open year-round. Now, if you'd like to hear us go into more depth about these locations in Kanazawa, feel free to reach out to us at lostwithoutjapan at gmail.com or through Instagram at lostwithoutjapan as well. With that, we're going to take a brief pause on our talk at this time, and we'll look to move forward with your trip around Japan as we move on to the city of Komaki with episode 29 of Lost Without Japan. As always, I will leave a recording time for city talk to these notes so that you can go directly to the lodging, food sites, restaurants, and such we've talked about right away so that you can see them firsthand and then start adding them to your very own Google Maps if you don't want to use the shows. Now on to some housekeeping. Please give a follow, like, and comment on your favorite streaming service. It really means the world to us. For updates on the show... Feel free to give a follow on Instagram at Lost Without Japan or even become a member of the show's Patreon at Lost Without Japan Podcast. 
If you want to reach out in that old-fashioned way, sorry, don't have a fax, but you can email me directly at lostwithoutjapan at gmail.com. I always want to say a big thank you to our sponsor of the show today, Rediscover Tours Japan. Their super brief advertisement will come at the end of today's show. If you could visit their site at rediscovertours.com, it'd be much appreciated. Let's go on to our outro today for the show. Thank you again so much for your time. Looks like I'm ready to call it a night. As thoughts begin to turn to our next city for your adventure, Kumaki and Aichi. Before we end up making our way to Gifu and leave the area that we're currently in for exploration elsewhere in Japan. Now, on behalf of Lost Without Japan and its entire crew, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we look forward to seeing you on board again in two weeks for our next episode. To everyone out there, o g i n k i day. Stay well, my friends. Planning the perfect trip to Japan takes a lot of time and research. Let Rediscover Tours and their 20 years of Japan travel experience make planning your next trip as fun and as easy as taking the trip itself. More details of all Rediscover Tours services can be found at rediscovertours.com. Song of the show will be Kanazawa no Ame, The Reigns of Kanazawa by Sane. Yonuchi. YouTube link will be provided in the show resource document as well. Thank you all so much for your time once again. Can't believe it's almost been a year. Look forward to many more to come. I'm sorry.
I'm not afraid. 